welcome to our luncheon today. Um, I really enjoy having everybody here and seeing this room full of all of our friends and colleagues. Um, I appreciate everybody spending their time today. We're doing a little bit different, so you'll hear a little bit about that. Um, thanks to Kim Russell for hosting us today. We really appreciate being able to use your fine facility, and um, your staff have taken very good care of us, so we really appreciate that. Um, as I begin, I want to let you know what we're going to talk about today, and it's called Public Health Start Here. And it's really our directive to really make sure that we're addressing the needs of our community. This is also the theme for the National Public Health Week, and this is where public health starts. Here with each of us in this room, each of us in our homes, and in our community. My name is Judy Halstead. I'm the health director for Lincoln and Lancaster County. And today we're celebrating local public health and highlighting programs and people in our community that are committed to improving the health of others. Thank you for being here because all of you are committed to helping in the health of others as well. Our health department's an important part of the local public health system, but you're also necessary. And I think by working together, as Lori will tell you, we're all working towards achieving the healthiest community in the nation. Before I say more about public health start here, I'd like to make just a few introductions. Uh, first and foremost is my, your mayor and my boss, and he'll be talking to us in a few minutes, Mayor Chris Beiler. Our Board of Health members, President Heidi Stark, Dr. Alan Doster, Dr. Carla Lester, Dr. Michelle Peterson. I know Commissioner Amundsen is going to be joining us shortly. City Councilman Doug Emery. And Lieutenant Colonel Craig Strong. And on behalf of our department, I want to thank all of you for what you do for us and for what you do for the community. Also joining us today is Councilman uh, Carl Eskridge. There you go. I think Larry Hudkins is just walking in, County Commissioner. <laughs> nice entry, <answer>, Larry. <laughs> you time your introduction so well. <laughs> we also have some past Board of Health members today, um, Gil Savory, Ken Swoboda, and Marsha White. I have not seen Marie come in yet. Is she here? Marie Woodhead will be joining us from Congressman Fortenberry's office, too, so please welcome her when she gets here. Um, at this time, I'd like to give you a, have you give a special welcome to Mayor Beitler, and he's going to provide us with some opening remarks for our event and actually show us how he likes to have some fun. Well, good afternoon to all of you. Isn't it? Well, good. I'm glad somebody agrees. <laughs> and I hope some of you agree that it's nice to have a lot of rain for a change. Yeah. And you know, I uh, I started uh, thinking about this event a little bit over the over the weekend and Sunday night. It was such a nice thing to watch 60 Minutes, and I don't know how many of you saw that. But one of those breakthrough events was announced in the area of health, and that had to do with hepatitis C and the fact that they now believe they've found a cure for it, not just medicines that uh, mitigate the chronic condition, but an actual cure for a disease that affects some, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 3 million people, they reported on the TV. So now it's about a $120,000 treatment series. Uh, and now it's to the rest of us to figure out how to, how to get that cost reduced and how to get that cure across the board to all of those people. But that's a good day when you can hear things like that on the news. And I hope it uh, has the effect of bolstering all of you and. Uh, many of you, all of you involved in health care, in what you do every day uh, to see a big result like that in our time. I want to thank Judy and everybody here for what you do for public health and for being here today to celebrate public health. Public health start here, simple and direct national slogan. Sends the message that we have both a personal and a community responsibility to health. 
reminds us all that good personal health is connected to good public health and that our individual health behaviors do indeed have an impact on the city and on our society. A few years ago, the Community Health Endowment set a goal of making Lincoln the healthiest city in the nation. A lofty goal, but they have great leadership and achieving that goal would be definitely worth the time and effort. Especially when you consider some of the alarming, alarming facts that, that we're seeing these days. For the first time in decades, the current generation is not as healthy as the one that came before. More than half of all cancer deaths could be prevented by making healthy choices, eating right, being active, staying at a healthy weight, and not smoking. Average medical expenses are more than twice as high for a person with diabetes as for someone without diabetes. We're eating 31% more calories than we were 40 years ago and 50% more fat and much more sugar than even that. And foodborne contaminants continue to sicken tens of millions of people annually. So we have a workload ahead of us. In Lincoln, we are taking these health issues seriously and we've made prevention a priority. This is reflected in our city's planning efforts as part of our outcome-based budgeting process, we've identified eight outcome areas. One of these is healthy and productive people. And these are some of the goals in that outcome area. Assuring appropriate access to health care for all, to support active living, to maintain the community's health status by monitoring and educating in the areas of obesity and smoking rates and immunizations and injuries to children. Another outcome area for the city, another of the eight is environmental quality. And within that, the goals include safe water and the prevention of human exposure to environmental hazards and the proper management of wastewater and solid waste. So I'm proud to be a part of a community that's working together uh, in so many ways uh, to help all of the residents uh, stay healthy. Some of the recent initiatives, Lincoln is one of only eight Nebraska cities designated as a Let's Move city. And we've been recognized nationally by the National League of Cities for the great work we're doing to get people moving again. Lincoln residents are indeed responding, responding to the five-year health challenge that was issued last summer to eat more fruits and vegetables, to get more physical activity and achieve a healthier weight. We've made access to a medical home a community health priority led by a community-wide uh, coalition. Uh, and prevention of childhood obesity has become a community-wide effort. We've received national recognition as a bike-friendly city, pedestrian-friendly city, as the happiest city, as one of America's most livable cities, as a safe and secure place to live, a clean city, and more. So in many areas, we are doing well, but much remains to be done. The Lincoln Community Foundation spearheaded a vital signs report that demonstrates the need to continue to invest more in our children, our families, and, our, and their support systems. So uh, all of these things are happening. The city TV station, thanks to help from the Community Health Endowment, Lori, thank you, and your board, has enabled the city to turn one of our government access channels into a Tim Health TV with all day programming on wellness and health. So I'm excited about our city, I'm excited about what you all are doing and what we're doing together for our children. Uh, I've been corralled into being a part of showing this short clip of a video here. 
that we made uh, as part of our application to be a playful city. And you should just ignore the guy who can't make a basket. <laughs> Welcome to Lincoln, Nebraska, home of over 400 parks, playgrounds, sports fields, and complexes, and 131 miles of trails connecting them. Let's go see these fun and active play areas. What does play mean to you? Play means having fun with your friends. Play means to me like people having fun and doing all kinds of activities. Catching a corner or catching a flag or a line tag. I like to do the monkey bars and I like to do the sides. If you don't play, I don't think that you could do anything else. Let's play for one hour! Our city offers many opportunities to play. And I'm proud of our health department and our parks and recreation department and all our community partners who work together to make these safe play spaces available to all our children and families. Everyone needs play in their day. Yes! Ah! <laughs> Play is exhausting, <laughs> but I'm for it. And congratulations again, Judy, thanks for being such a great director. Thank you to your staff. Thank you to the Board of Health, who works for the community for nothing. Thanks to the Community Health Endowment, and I could name so many other organizations who are, who are making uh, this city a, a great place to live. Thank you all. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for your, all of your support to our department um, and all the fun things that we're able to do. We probably can't play as much as we'd like to play, but um, we certainly enjoy it as well. Um, in this part of the annual meeting, they are going to start serving lunch for us. Um, please go ahead and eat. I know you are so respectful of the mayor, and I'm sure you'll be less respectful of me, but everybody was so quiet. And, um, please, it's okay. We're, we're playing it on some clanking around and those kinds of things. Um, but I did want to share with you that we're going to change it up a little bit this year. Um, this is what happens when you leave on a trip and you say to senior management, now you guys decide what you want the theme to be this year, and you guys decide who you want the presenter to be. Um, because then I came back and they said, well, we want to talk about our department. We have wonderful keynote speakers every year. We have folks that come in about national trends. But we've also recognized that if you work with us on personal health services, you really don't know what we do in environmental health. Or if you work with us in dental and nutrition, you may not know what we're doing in animal control. And so many of our partners are here, but they only work with us in one particular area. So this time, we're going to talk to you a little bit about public health start here. And we're going to talk about what the health department actually does. This is your health department. Um, this belongs to you. Uh, you provide the opportunity for all of us to do what we do and because we have the passion that we do and the enjoyment that we have um, from our work. But we've decided that we needed to talk a little bit about public health and, and what it may mean to you and what it means to us. To you, it may mean children getting shots. It may mean restaurant inspections or government regulations. And while certainly we do these things, there is much more to the story of public health. While you enjoy your lunch, let me begin with a bit of information about our department. Our department is the largest and the oldest local public health department in Nebraska. In 1886, the Lincoln City Council approved a $500 appropriation for the health department. $500. 128 years later, we're still growing strong, and fortunately, we do have a little bit bigger budget than that. The Lancaster County Board of Health is even older at 141 years. And actually, you guys, you don't look a day over 140, so you should feel good. <laughs> at that time, the City Council passed an ordinance that created the Board of Health and primarily to deal with the enforcement of quarantine for then the current outbreak of smallpox. For the first time in the almost 20 years that I've worked at the health department, this year we almost used that quarantine power again. Only this time it was with a tuberculosis patient who was active TB who was refusing to take medications. Also was refusing to keep up with one of our staff. 
Fortunately, and I'll tell you a little bit more about her later, she kept up with this person. And while I may have been the bad cop, um, Brenda certainly was the good cop. And it was because of Brenda's wonderful efforts that this person became very compliant and actually successfully completed treatment. So we're proud of that. But it is a sobering reminder of how quickly a communicable disease can take over our community when somebody is active and won't take their medications. The mission of our health department is to protect and promote the public's health. Today, our nine-member Board of Health advises the health department, particularly in areas of policy de development. They listen to long discussions about air quality and about poopy pools and sexually transmitted infections. They help us set our fees and they help give flight to things like our smoking bans and garbage service and planning for disasters. It's through their efforts that our community is a healthier community. I'm going to emphasize the word county just for a minute, not just because we have two county commissioners sitting here today, um, but I want to emphasize that, that, that county is still a very important part of what we do. While the vast majority of the 297,000 people that we serve in our county live in the city of Lincoln, about 31,000 live out in other villages and communities and in the county. We are a city county health department and we have a presence with all of them. Sometimes it's welcomed and sometimes it's not, but we do have a presence with all of them. This year, our team worked um, to update, I see John Chess in the back, to update our interlocal agreements with 15 of our cities and villages in Lancaster County, some of which hadn't been updated for over 40 years. And so the staff worked very, very hard to update those and to work hard to make sure that we're current on our practices and to make sure that we're covering our other communities as well as we're covering the city of Lincoln. Our $19 million budget is made up of multiple sources, including city and county tax dollars, most of which you know, but user fees, grants, and contracts also make up a majority of our budget. Currently, we administer over 50 grants and contracts, and we are approximately 190 full and part-time employees strong. We make up eight divisions, and each of these divisions is responsible for specific activities, but we don't work in isolation. While people's, people's perception of public health may often be quite narrow, the reality is, is we take advantage of public health 24 hours a day with clean water, clean air, safe neighborhoods, available health care, licensed pets, a safe food supply, and healthy moms and babies. They're all examples of where public health touches all of us in Lincoln and Lancaster County. Public health can easily be taken for granted because when we do our jobs, as we mentioned earlier, thanks to Brenda, we prevent a lot of bad things from happening in the first place. For those of us in public health, the importance of prevention is a frequent topic of conversation. How do we prove prevention is effective? And how do we measure it if it never happened? We tend to take particular notice of public health when something in our lives is disrupted. A foodborne illness, a chemical spill, smoke-filled air when Flint Hills in Kansas needs to keep on burning, or a flu outbreak. It's not often until we are sick or injured that we ask how illness or injury could be prevented. Today I'm going to highlight a few of the many programs of the health department and we'll recognize people and organizations that are improving the health of others. I ask that you recognize that everything we do is to prevent and protect the public's health, promote and protect the public's health, excuse me. While I will share a bit about the programs in each of our eight divisions, we would be here till dinner if I covered all of them. So just know that we're only going to highlight a few from the eight divisions um, because it would be way too much. But I do want you to get a sense of the breadth and the depth of what we do. And I want to highlight some of the newer and more exciting efforts we're undertaking in our community. Now, turnabout is fair play to my staff because I'm going to go ahead and talk about a few of the programs in each of the eight divisions, but what I'd like to do is when I introduce the divisions, I would like the staff that are present here, and I do have most of our leadership team, to just stand just at the beginning of that section. There you go, guys. I'll begin, begin by talking about two divisions whose primary function is to support the infrastructure of our department. Because I don't want this staff to be left out. We don't have a lot of pictures. Um, but these two divisions are our Director's Office Division and the Division of Information and Fiscal Management. Will you folks briefly stand? We have a few here. Thank you. 
There isn't a person in our department that doesn't recognize and appreciate the role of the information and fiscal management staff. Because of them, our computers work, usual things like bills getting paid. Many of you who are subcontractors with, you, with us appreciate that. We try to make sure that gets all taken care of. Our budget is created, the revenue, the revenue and expenses of every program is managed, and we keep up with tech technology. The behind the scenes work of this division keeps our department functioning. The tasks of our director's office include payroll and personnel, and fortunately for Ronnie, everybody manages to get paid every couple of weeks, so we appreciate her. Our overall management of the department obviously rests with this department as well. And as many of you who know me know that I love this place. And I'm very honored to be the health department director. Um, and we'll keep moving along, but I work with the best group of people you can ever imagine. Public health starts with protecting people and pets in the animal control division. Would you guys please stand? We have a few of those folks here too. As Steve knows, I say it's one of our never boring divisions. <laughs> As Lincoln grows, so does our pet population. Approximately 62,000 dog and cat licenses were sold last year. That means 62,000 dogs and cats in Lincoln were vaccinated against rabies, a public health issue. We don't usually think about pets when we're talking about public health. However, there is a close connection. Protecting and promoting the health of people and pets involves owner education and owner responsibility for the prevention of animal bites, attacks, and unfortunately, animal neglect. Dog bites and attacks are decreasing despite an increasing in Lincoln's pet population. Getting pets spayed and neutered helps reduce bites and attacks. Fortunately, there's not been a human case of rabies for decades. However, the risk remains and we see positive cases of rabies every year. Last year, we tested over 800 bats. My favorite picture. Four of which were positive for rabies. And in the year before, we tested 212, excuse me, the year before, we tested 900, and 10 of those tested positive for rabies. Communicable disease staff and the animal control staff work together on rabies surveillance and conduct follow-up when we suspect that there was a human contact. Our tag at license promotion this year has resulted in fewer dogs being impounded at the shelter, more licensed dogs delivered home, and knowing that lost animals can quickly be reunited, reunited with their families when they're vaccinated and licensed, we continue to promote that. To close our animal control overview, we have a short clip of our recent Tag It campaign. Hi, I'm Officer Purdom with Lincoln Animal Control. I want to remind you to get your identification on your animal with a city license. Once we have the license on the animal, if it gets picked up for any reason, we can get it back to the original owner safely. Tag it. 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 Very cute. Public health starts with preventing the spread of communicable disease within the community. The Division of Health Data and Evaluation is involved in monitoring and preparing for public health emergencies. Will that division members please stand? They have an award winner today, so we have a few more of those. <laughs> disease surveillance is a core component with monitoring community health status and investigating disease outbreaks and responding when needed. We work to prevent the spread of disease through vaccinations and promoting good health practices. Despite our best efforts, diseases can spread in the community and are not off, and may not be off, may not be detected by labs and by doctors. So we provide school and child care surveillance to make sure that there may because there may be a sign for disease in those communities. Respiratory flu and gastrointestinal illnesses such as norovirus are among the most common. We also address less commonly occurring diseases such as tuberculosis that require a great deal of follow-up, including daily contact with active TB patients to make sure they're taking their medications as prescribed. And that medication has to be um, provided daily for six to nine months. So that means that staff are literally there watching them take their medication day in and day out for six to nine months. So you'll hear more about that when we talk about Brenda. But um, keep that in mind, knowing that your life is turned upside down, not only by having to take those medications, but um, by knowing that somebody's watching over your shoulder every day for nine months, too. Um, and in Lincoln, we do see about four to six active TB cases every year. 
Most respiratory illnesses are spread from person to person, but may be contracted by close contact with an animal host. While dog and bat bites may cause rabies, the virus can also be transmitted by humans. Diseases attributed to animal and insect, bite, insect bites, such as West Nile virus and Rocky Mountain spotted fever, are not spread from person to person. We all need to know the difference. The division also collects, analyzes, and shares health data with many programs within our department, but also with many of you. We utilize the data to, act, to assess the community's health status and to plan and report outcomes. Like many health departments throughout the country, we plan and prepare for emergencies. With our partners at Lincoln Fire and Rescue, law enforcement, county emergency managers, and others, we participate together in exercises to practice for emergencies. Our Health Action Center at the Health Department manages real-world events and disasters. We collaborate with emergency management, our local hospital partners, and other emergency personnel to respond to natural disasters and potentially hazardous materials events. Federal grants have allowed us to provide safety equipment to, for multi-agency personnel in other city departments, county departments, hospitals, and other providers. Those funds have also allowed us to develop a system for picking up and transporting people and pets. We can set up tents for decontamination, and we even have a 20-bed mobile hospital that can be set up by members of the Medical Reserve Corps and volunteers in an emergency. <coughs> and it, we were reminded of this when we had the Hallam tornado. Most of you are familiar with that a number of years ago. Had that tornado stayed on the path that it was on before it did its little jump at Firth, all three of our general hospitals were in the direct line of that tornado. And that, that is scary for us to go back and look at that. And, and fortunately, the emergency manager has put in place a lot of different opportunities, but that mobile hospital is one of the ones that we know and hope we'll never have to use, because we never hope that we're that unlucky in Lincoln. Um, but it was, again, a, a real uh, brutal reminder to us that we could have lost at least portions of all three of our hospitals during that tornado. Obviously, this division is a very diverse division um, and one that supports the core services of public health, and we appreciate all that they do. Public health starts with keeping people healthy by preventing disease and injury through programs of our Health Promotion and Outreach Division. Can I please have those folks stand? <laughs> we got a few more. Many of those staff got to be worker bees at today's luncheon today, so thank you very much for all you've done. One of the programs is Safe Kids Lincoln Lancaster County, which exists to prevent childhood injury, focus, focusing on 58,000 children in Lancaster County under the age of 14. More than 50 community agencies and individuals volunteer their time and resources to prevent childhood injury in six areas. Today's, uh, today I'm highlighting the Fire and Burn Prevention Task Force and the Fire Safe Landlord Training. <laughs> Fires in multi-unit residential complexes can put hundreds of children and adults at great risk for injury or death. Last year, more than 100 people from multi-unit dwellings were displaced due to fire, smoke, and water damage. Unfortunately, many of these were caused due to poorly discarded cigarettes. And I think we had another one um, again this morning. To provide all of Lincoln's multi-unit housing population with comprehensive fire protection, the task force, coordinated by the health department, developed a training for landlords to help them prevent apartment fires. The team has provided training to 78 landlords who represent nearly 7,000 living units in Lincoln. The response from landlords has been overwhelmingly positive. They have included fire prevention measures in their lease agreements. They've created no smoking policies. Most landlords knew that they could prohibit pets, but they didn't know they could prohibit smoking and tobacco use in their units. Now they know. Many of them have provided education to their tenants, and they've taken advantage of free smoke alarm installation. These landlords have also added their properties to the tobacco-free Lancaster County Housing Registry. And this registry is where you can go if you want to find an apartment that um, has smoke-free units. By working together with these fire safe landlord trainings, thousands of Lincoln families are receiving much greater protection from the devastation of a residential fire. Public health also starts with making small changes to make a big difference. I think. Mayor Beitler talked about Lincoln as a let's move city and the distinction it gives our community. Just the term let's move city sounds healthy and it's simple. Our citizens young to old are recognizing that health, to be healthy we must move more and eat nutritious foods. 
The 54321 GO program was launched a few years ago by the Health Department with the Salvation Army, Clyde Malone Community Center, Teach a Kid to Fish, all to test a health message. The message is simple and it's aimed at preventing childhood obesity. Our partners use the message in newsletters, after school activities, during basketball games and social media and wherever else messages could be visible. The kids learned and the parents listened and health changes were taking place. Children and families especially paid attention to adding more fruits and vegetables, being more active, and decreasing screen time. From the success of this small pilot, the 54321 GO team was born. Today, dozens of partners are taking this message community-wide. You'll see these simple messages throughout the community, and we're going to show you just a quick 54321 GO video that'll explain a little bit more. Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department presents this series to support healthy lifestyle choices for our children and families. I'm Anna Wishart, the community spokesperson for Let's Move Lincoln and GO team member of 54321 GO, led by the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department. Both of these community efforts are raising awareness in Lincoln and providing resources to decrease childhood obesity and improve overall health of families. Have you heard of the 54321 GO health message? Do you know what the countdown numbers stand for? We are promoting a simple health message for kids and families to follow every day. It stands for getting five servings of fruits and vegetables, four servings of water, three servings of low-fat dairy, two hours or less of screen time, and one hour or more of physical activity every day. This is so simple and a healthy way for all of us to live our lives. Every time you see one of these messages, remember that even small changes in health can make a lifetime difference. Our next division starts with helping people receive necessary health services. Would the members of the Community Health Services Division please stand? An important role of our Community Health Services Division is to connect vulnerable populations to a source of health care. Most of our work involves helping navigate the health care system, whether the need is urgent and potentially life-threatening, like a patient with diabetes coming out of prison who doesn't have their insulin, or the need is intermediate, like a refugee resettling in Lincoln from Sudan who needs immunizations. But in many cases, the need is long-term, like helping a patient find a way to get psychiatric medications or helping an uninsured person with a chronic disease find health insurance. <coughs> Another role of our division is to support families who are at high risk for child abuse and neglect to parent positively through the Healthy Families America Home Visiting Program. We follow an evidence-based, nationally recognized model in partnership with CEDARS. The most common risk factor for poor parenting is being a victim of child abuse or neglect themselves, and many of our parents are. Children we serve in our home visiting program have positive measurable health outcomes and have a decreased likelihood of child abuse and neglect. Staff also focus on prevention by assuring that those at risk for sexually transmitted infections are treated and educated about ways to prevent future infections. Chlamydia is the most common infection reported in the United States and in Lancaster County. We work with our community partners to address the barriers that prevent people from getting the care they need and to prevent the spread in our community. Another vulnerable population we serve includes refugees and asylees new to our country that need health assessments, infectious disease screening, immunizations, and connection to a medical home. We work closely with refugee resettlement agencies and we serve over, over 250 refugees of all ages every year. The Community Health Services team has been successful in treating another vulnerable popu population through the General Assistance Medical Clinic, or what we refer to as GA. This is a county-funded program, that's, and approximately 60% of the General Assistance programs also have a mental health diagnosis. We're pleased to report that our GA patients have better diabetes control and lower blood pressure than the average Medicaid client, and most general assistance patients decrease their inappropriate use of an emergency room after receiving help in our clinic. The poor and uninsured with diabetes can also receive free or low-cost glucometer strips. Nearly 2,500 vials of strips have been distributed since 2012. Case management assures patients receive connection and transportation to affordable medical home. They receive one-on-one -on -one medication education and nutrition counseling, needed foot and vision care, and self-management classes. 
As you can tell through this division, we connect thousands of vulnerable people in our community to care every year. Public health starts with good oral health from our Division of Dental Health and Nutrition. Will you guys stand? <laughs> Former Surgeon General C. Everett Koop understood the profound impact that oral health has on physical health. He knew that public health starts with good oral health. The need for routine oral health care is the most prevalent unmet health care need among children and adolescents in the United States. Children and youth with poor oral health are likely to have many other problems, such as developing infections from tooth decay that can lead to other, other serious health problems. They experience difficulty chewing food, resulting in poor nutrition and poor health, speech problems, pain that can contribute to difficulty concentrating, learning, and too many absences from school, or they may have a smile that causes them embarrassment, low self-esteem, and other psychological problems. The Health Department Dental Pro Program uses both individual and population-based strategies for the prevention of tooth decay. And this little guy looks pretty cool while he's getting his teeth checked. <laughs> the Health Department reaches out to families through school-based screenings and through early Head Start and Health Department and, health and Head Start programs to identify those children and families unable to access dental homes. Last year we set a record serving close to 3,500 patients with nearly 11,000 patient visits in our dental program. Of the dental patients served, 56% were children and over 58% were of a racial or ethnic minority. During this past year, our dental clinic began serving children and families with evening hours thanks to a grant from the Community Health Endowment to help us better accommodate their schedules and to minimize absences from work and from school. Public health also starts with healthy pregnancies, healthy babies, and healthy infants. The Health Department's Women, Infant, Children program, or WIC program as most of you know it, helps to make this happen. It's a federally funded program serving low-income pregnant breastfeeding and postpartum women. It also serves their infants, <coughs> young children under the age of five. Every month, more than 3,500 mothers, babies, and children receive services from our WIC staff. WIC has been helping women become confident parents of well-nourished, happy, and school-ready children for 40 years, and we accomplished this through nutrition and breastfeeding education. The Health Department's WIC program ranks among the top WIC programs in the state for the percent of mothers who start breastfeeding and continue to breastfeed for at least six months. When babies and mothers are healthy, the whole community benefits. Because participating grocery stores are required to stock WIC-approved foods, those foods become available for the entire community. And WIC has a positive economic impact in our community as well. Locally, $2.7 million are spent annually to purchase nutritious food for WIC participants in Lincoln and Lancaster County. We're looking forward to our next 40 years in helping to build healthy kids and strong parents who contribute to a healthier community. Our last and our largest division is environmental public health. Would those folks please stand? Public health starts with all people in the city and county living, working, and playing in safe and healthy environments. In our environmental public health division, public health starts with clean air. The quality of the air we breathe directly impacts our health. Our air quality, our air quality program monitors the air 24-7 to make sure we're meeting federal health-based standards and to complain to Kansas when we need to. Staff enforce air pollution laws, working with over 200 businesses and industries, helping them comply with regulations designed to protect the air we breathe. We work collaborative, collaboratively with others to promote walking and biking and good community design. Our goal is to have good air quality at least 90% of the days. Public health starts with safe drinking water and clean streams. Most of us take safe water for granted. However, over 200 homes in Lincoln and thousands of county residents rely on private wells for their drinking water. We permit, inspect, and sample wells in Lincoln. And in the county, all homes that rely on private wells or sewage systems are reviewed prior to sale to make sure their water is safe to drink and the sewage system is not discharging into the ground or a stream. Public health starts with safe swimming pools. Thousands of children and adults enjoy being active in our swimming pools. To protect their health, we inspect these pools and train swimming pool operators on safe and healthy operation. 
Unfortunately, last year, 26% of our inspections resulted in a pool closure due to health code violations. Earlier this month, the City Council approved new regulations that we believe will better protect the public from waterborne illnesses. Public health starts with cleaner, safer neighborhoods. Three years ago, the Lincoln City Council passed an ordinance requiring rental properties to have garbage service provided by the owner. Since that time, garbage complaints have dropped 60%. <coughs> Our neighborhoods are cleaner, safer, and the risk of public health problems caused by rodents and insects has been reduced. Public health starts with responding to hazardous materials incidents. Highly trained health department staff work closely with Lincoln Fire and Rescue to respond to, control, and remediate spills and releases of hazardous materials. Unfortunately, we recently had our, one of our meth labs, and we also monitor and, and take care of illegal dumping. Quick response is key to protecting both the public's health and our environment. And our staff, like many of our staff in our divisions, are on call 24-7. Last year, we responded to 135 emergencies involving hazardous materials and illegal discharges in the counties. Public health starts with safe hazardous waste disposal. Okay, here's the audience participation part. How many of you here have brought old pesticides, solvents, mercury, or other toxics to one of our household hazardous waste collections? Let me see. Good job, you guys. <coughs> Thank you, that's wonderful. This past year, the Mayor's Solid Waste Management Plan Advisory Committee recommended that year-round access to hazardous waste disposal be provided. So staff wrote a grant to the Nebraska Environmental Trust, and we were notified this month we were awarded $149,000 for toxics reduction education and to conduct a site study for a permanent facility here in Lincoln. Our goal is to collect at least 100,000 pounds of toxics per year. Public health starts with safe medication disposal. From preventing accidental poisonings and illegal drug diversion to protecting Nebraska's water resources, we've joined together to identify safe and legal disposal options for leftover medications. The Drug Enforcement Administration Medication Take Back Day is scheduled for this Saturday, April 26th, and it's a great opportunity for our community to properly dispose of leftover medications. This fun video is a nice example of the education and outreach that lies at the foundation of the Nebraska Meds Project. You wouldn't drink this, so don't do this. When unused or unwanted medications are improperly disposed, it can go straight to streams and groundwater supplies. This has a direct impact on things that live there, like fish, plants, and microbes. Instead of flushing your unused and unwanted medications, dispose of them properly at a participating local pharmacy or other Take Back events. Just ask your pharmacist for more details. Take back your unused or unwanted medication April 26th. Visit DEA.gov to find a Take Back location near you. Thanks. I hope this overview of a few of our programs has given you more of a flavor for the scope of our department. I hope you learned one new thing about our health department today, and we are your health department. We're a local health department with programs that directly impact our residents, and we're here to partner with you, but most importantly, we're here to serve you. Public health does start here. Thank you. Okay, this is the fun part. Um, I now have the pleasure of asking three of our Board of Health members, Dr. Heidi Stark, Commissioner Roma Amundsen, and Doug Emery, to, and Councilman Doug Emery to join me on stage. Roma. Oh, okay. Um, Doug, <laughs> Doug, we're gonna have Dr. Stark go ahead and introduce our three community award recipients and our John J. Hannigan Award. Thanks. Thank you, Judy. Would you all join me in congratulating Judy and her health department? Um, Lincoln is a wonderful community. She and her leadership and her staff develop um, a relationship with all the partnerships that we have here. I'm preaching to the choir, but we are so privileged and blessed to have Judy and all of you here serving Lincoln. So thank you. Okay, we get to move on to the Community Health Awards. Uh, we all know that moving more and good health go together. In fact, increasing physical activity among people of all ages is one of our community health priorities. And Lincoln is becoming known as a city on the move. It is nationally recognized as a walk-friendly and bike-friendly city, as well as for its parks and trails. Someone who is very familiar with Lincoln's 131 miles of commuter trails and who is definitely a person on the move is Damon Hershey. 
Damon, please join me at the podium. Damon is a father of two young children who transports by bicycle all across town. He is an avid bicyclist who has found a way to combine his vocation, bicycle shop employee and manager, with his avocation, someone who has been working on bicycles and commuting by bike since 1997. Damon is de dedicated to biking for himself, for his family, and for the public. To support a growing need for bicycle education in the community, Damon became a league certified instructor through the League of American Bicyclists. He is a trained and accredited bike safety leader offering classes to people of all ages. Over the past five years, Damon has played a big part in planning and implementing the National Bike to Work observances in Lincoln. He has provided local leadership to the League of American Bicyclists National Bike Challenge to recognize cities that are making efforts to get more people riding. In 2013, this challenge recognized Lincoln as the number one bike riding city in the country for communities with populations of 200,000 or more people. Damon has also... Damon has also lent his name, face, and bicycle expertise to a series of bike videos that the health department created in partnership with the Community Health Endowment, Channel 10 Health, and other bike enthusiasts. Five shows were created, and Damon was a frequent expert guest in the past year. These shows have been viewed by thousands on YouTube. Damon, a native of Lincoln, is the current president of Bicycle Lincoln, a community group that supports and promotes bicycling in Lincoln. He is also serving on the Mayor's Pedestrian and Bicycle Advisory Committee. With Damon today is his wife, Lily. Thank you, Damon, for what you are doing in this community to promote safe biking and to get more people moving. Congratulations on receiving this community award from the Board of Health. Thank you, Damon. Our next recipient of the Community Health Award is the Health 360 program of the Lancaster County Medical Society. Dr. Art Molnar, president of the Lancaster County Medical Society, is accepting the award today. Dr. Molnar, would you please join us? Health 360 is a community program designed to connect uninsured, low-income adults to a medical home or specialty care and to provide them with free or discounted medications. Today we recognize Health 360 as a vital part of our local health safety net. Approximately 35,000 adults between the ages of 18 and 65 in Lancaster County are uninsured. Most of the uninsured are low-wage workers who do not have insurance and do not qualify for Medicaid. Many go without care for decades, risking late detection of life-threatening conditions like cancer or progression of debilitating conditions such as blindness and amputation from untreated diabetes. Health 360 staff help people find an ongoing payment source for their health care whenever possible through sources like Medicaid, general assistance, or the health insurance marketplace. If they are not eligible for such assistance, Health 360 arranges services through private physician offices on a rotation basis and at a discounted rate. Patients are also helped with laboratory and radiology tests, surgical procedures, inpatient hospital care, and medications. All Health 360 patients are assisted by the Medication Assistance Program, or MAP. MAP leverages millions of dollars annually in free medications from national drug assistance programs for those in most need in our community. Each year, Health 360 helps 2,000 people with free, free medications, 1,000 clients access specialty care, and nearly 500 clients to have their own medical home. Clients who have been helped by Health 360 report being able to return to work, pursue their education, and in many cases, improve their overall health status, which has helped them to avoid relying on governmental assistance programs. Many thanks to the Health 360 staff who are helping those in most need every day. Um, it, it, it's a really great honor. It's a great program. And it's, it's a really great way for physicians to just go ahead and serve the underserved. 
in a very positive way. Um, when the ACA passed, and it was by the federal by the federal courts to deem to be the the, rule, the law of the land, um, a question was asked: Would this survive? And <coughs> to me, where I sit, it seems like there's still going to be a huge need because there's going to be still so many people that are going to be underserved. And I think this is one small way. And I hope other communities can follow what we're doing. Thank you. Our next community award recipient, recipient Joe Scar, please come to the podium. <laughs> Safe Kids was growing both in membership and program activity and was looking for ways to inform the public of the childhood injury prevention resources available to them. What better way to do that than through the radio station that markets itself primarily to 25 to 45 year old females, the pre precise demographic that Safe Kids wants to reach. These are moms of young children who make the majority of the health and safety decisions impacting their families. Joe and morning show co-host show, show co Jenna Sherwood-Klein eagerly accepted the initial request in 2006 to partner with Safe Kids and conduct a series of live interviews on various injury prevention topics and Safe Kids activities. Joe jumped in with both feet after those interviews in 2006 and over the past eight years has provided remote broadcasts from many of our community safety, fair, and car seat check events, emceed the annual Safe Kids Walk This Way event at seven elementary schools, and last year he and Jenna emceed the Safe Kids celebration. He gladly provides on-air and website promotion of Safe Kids car seat check events and always asks how he can do more to help with Safe Kids efforts. Joe's passion for child safety is fueled in large part by his two children. As a dad, he knows firsthand the, in the many injury risks facing kids today and is committed to doing his part to reduce those risks in his household and in our community. <clears throat> Celebrating with Joe today is his wife, Carmen. Thank you, Joe for your critical role in helping to give life-saving injury prevention information to literally thousands of families in our community each year. Please accept this Community Public Health Award with our sincere gratitude. Wow, this is quite an honor. I'm kind of nervous. I don't normally get nervous in front of groups of people like this. Um, my first experience with Safe Kids was about 13 years ago when my wife Carmen and I, gave, uh, Carmen gave birth to our son Canyon and we had to go to the car seat safety check. And we're like, how many of you had the car seat in and thought you had it in right? <laughs> we had it in so wrong. It was so, um, and yeah, and I, I have the privilege of working at Broadcast House B107.3. We also have Froggy 98. We have uh, KLIN and we also have WOW 105.3. And um, it's a group of radio stations that really takes pride in our community and, and helping out wherever we can. So um, this is really, I'm really just a mouthpiece. So I was really taken aback when I was called and, and was given this award. So this is really, I feel very privileged. This is really nice. But um, you really have to look around the room and it's all of you people that, that do what you do that make it all happen. And so the, whatever we can do to, to help get the message out and be a mouthpiece for you, we're happy to do it. And thank you very much, appreciate it. Judy was going to present this next award, but I would like to present this award to my good friend. Our next award winner is John Han the John J. Hannigan Memorial Award. This award is presented to a local physician who has exhibited leadership in the medical field and an ongoing respect for public health service. The Lancaster County Medical Society submits these nominations to the health, health department for this award. This year's Hannigan Memorial Award recipient is Dr. Kay Anderson. Please join us at the podium, Dr. Anderson. Dr. Anderson, who graduated from the University of Nebraska Medical Center, College of Medicine, in 1991. Before becoming a physician, Dr. Anderson was a registered nurse. As a matter of fact, she told me once that I think she began working in the hospital with her mother at about the age of 12 or 13 as a CNA. After she was a registered nurse, then she received a degree in social work. 
Obviously, her passion for helping the underserved for the public health goes back to her youth. Dr. Anderson completed her pediatric internship at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, and shortly after becoming board certified in pediatrics, began practicing in the at the Lincoln at in Lincoln at the Mutual of Omaha Health Plans. She is currently practicing with the Lincoln Pediatric Group and is a fellow in the American Academy of Pediatrics and a longtime member of the Lancaster County Medical Society and the Nebraska Medical Association. Dr. Anderson has many passions related to caring for children, but she is most known for her promotion of breastfeeding for new moms. As an international board certified lactation consultant, she has worked with many new moms to help them be successful in breastfeeding their babies. She said to me when I had Augie, Heidi, do you think you can do this? I said, Kay, I can do anything for six weeks. <laughs> she, she said, you are going to sit in this room for 24 hours a day for six weeks until we can get this figured out. <laughs> Without this help from Dr. Anderson, some of these mothers, including me, would have given up. But she gave them and me the confidence and practical techniques that we needed to continue to breastfeed our babies. Her knowledge is without question, and her patience and commitment are immediately sensed by her patients. According to Dr. Bill Swisher, one of her partners, Dr. Anderson is very much an advocate for breastfeeding, but more importantly, she is an advocate for her patients. She realizes each patient's needs are unique, and she addresses those needs individually, always to the benefit of the family and kids. In 2013, Dr. Anderson joined others working with a grant from the Community Health Endowment to the Partnership for a Healthy Lincoln to create the Lincoln Community Breastfeeding Initiative. According to Dr. Bob Rahner, Dr. Anderson has been instrumental in the success of the Community Breastfeeding Initiative and has been a tremendous help in linking clinical efforts with the project. It really helps having a practicing physician's perspective and input. Another member of the coalition, Ann Seacrest, executive director of Milkwork, stated, I am pleased that Dr. Anderson is being recognized for her role in guiding the Lincoln Community Breastfeeding Initiative. Dr. Anderson has given freely of her time and expertise to a process that has involved numerous organizations and providers. Thank you, Dr. K. Anderson, for your dedication to the health of Lincoln's children. Congratulations on receiving the John J. Hannigan Award. Joining Dr. Anderson are her husband, Todd, and her daughters, Sydney and Shelby. Well, I was told I might get to say a few words, so I actually prepared, because I have to give a plug for the breastfeeding world. Um, actually, I never expected to receive an award. Um, in fact, it's even hard sometimes to tell people what I do, because when I say the word breast, it kind of throws people off. So instead, I tell people that I'm a lactation consultant or lactation medicine, and then they have to process what that really is. And then they look at me confused and say, they have doctors for that? Um, but if, a, if uh, the person I'm talking to actually had um, successful breastfeeding, then I get a look of joy from them. But too often I get a look of, wow, that did not go well. And that's not really what we want to hear here in Lincoln. So the Community Breastfeeding Initiative was spawned. Um, my friend Bob Browner and his people pulled together representatives from all over Lincoln to assess the status of breastfeeding here in Lincoln and to help us get all on the same page so that we could give consistent messages um, to mothers. Um, we've had mothers over time frustrated because they're getting inconsistent messages um, and advice. And I think this is why. In years past, grandmothers who breastfed their babies taught their daughters how to do so. But about the time I was an infant, not that long ago, mothers were told to feed formula, so a couple generations came and went without breastfeeding as the norm. And so that breastfeeding knowledge was lost. Then when breastfeeding came back around, mothers were told, you must do this, it's best for your baby, it's easy, it's natural, you have to do this. But with that, with that lack of knowledge getting passed down through generations, some babies were getting dehydrated, jaundiced while waiting for the mother's milk to come in, and um, sometimes didn't gain weight appropriately. So medical providers had to step in. Well, with that, many of these um, medical providers did not get formal education on the lactation process, and so then they were quick to recommend formula to help these babies that were in trouble, and then the breastfeeding um, process was lost. And I do get that because I did go through nursing school, medical school, pediatric residency, and I was not taught a thing about breastfeeding. What I learned about breastfeeding initially was from those two girls sitting right there. Um, and they're proud of that, right? Um, so, 
So to fill this gap in training, the breastfeeding initiative has came to be, and what we're doing is providing um, our medical <coughs> community with tools and education to promote breastfeeding as the norm and to also support the breastfeeding process. So my goal is that before long, there will be a process in place such that extra lactation support from people like me won't even be necessary and it will just go well. Now at this point I do have to add that breastfeeding is of course best for our babies, but not everyone is able to breastfeed. I spend a great deal of my time um, doing grief counseling for mothers who have who have to mourn the loss of their dream of breastfeeding their babies. And I also counsel many mothers who feel terribly guilty because they may have given up too soon or because they really didn't want to breastfeed but everybody told them that they should. So I think it's, our, it's very important for our community to support these mothers just as much as others. We need to respect their decision, encourage them to feel good about their efforts so that perhaps they'll feel, to feel empowered to try again next time or at least support their friends who want to breastfeed. So I do absolutely love working with these mothers and babies, whether they successfully breastfeed or not. And I appreciate the people in my life who have made it possible for me to do this. Um, after working years full time, my husband has allowed me to work part time so that I could be, um, spend more time with my daughters. My partners at the Lincoln Pediatric Group allow me the flexibility to spend a lot of time with each of these mothers to um, get them the help they need. And finally, my girls taught me a ton about being a mom and also about being a pediatrician and, of course, a lactation physician. Um, so with all this experience um, and, I guess, wisdom as I grow older, I've been able to um, have some impact on the health, health of our community, so I thank you for this award. At this point, this is probably the best kept secret we've ever been able to keep for like 20 years at the health department, but high five to a few of you, Dan and Charlotte. Um, and uh, Harry for keeping this one a surprise. At this point, I would like to call Bob Downey to come up. This is not on your programs. Um, this is just a, a quick award. Um, while he's coming up, I'll tell you a story. Usually when most of my senior management team has their own relationships in the community, I try not to get in the middle of that. So when the dental college calls me, um, I'll call Gwendy and say, hmm, dental college is calling. I wonder why they're calling. Well, same thing with Capital Humane Society. Steve and Bob have, have established a very close working relationship over the years. And about a month ago, Bob called me, and um, he left a message. And so I called down to Steve, and I said, hmm, Bob called. Do you have any idea what he's calling? He says, well, you know, he's raffling off that really cool car, so he probably wants to hit you up for 100 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> So, joke's on you, Steve. No, it wasn't that. <laughs> um, but anyway, it is my honor to introduce Bob Downey from the Capital Humane Society, who's going to present a special award today. Thank you, Judy. Yep. Judy, thank you very much for allowing me to do this. And my personal congratulations to the entire staff of the health department for what you do for this community. Lincoln's a far better place with you than without you. So thank you very much. Um, I'm feeling really, really good these days about where Capital Humane Society is at this point in its history and a lot of good, positive things going on for the organization. But for me to be able to feel that way, uh, there are a lot of components about what we do that have to be performing very well, and there are a lot of relationships that we have that have to be performing really well. And one of those most important relationships is the relationship that we have with the animal control program here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And it's very easy to uh, single out Mr. Beal, Steve, uh, for his leadership uh, that makes that relationship go. And, and, you know, I could list off a whole bunch of positives uh, about what is going on uh, between Lincoln Animal Control and Capital Humane Society, but one of the things I think that points out the strength and the value of a relationship is when some of the tough conversations that sometimes have to take place, take place, and what emerges from those conversations might be adjustments uh, in how we do things, but an even greater understanding and a deeper respect for each other uh, after those conversations take place, and a great friendship uh, that has emerged from that, both professionally and personally outside of, of our workplaces. And I'd like to read to you. Yeah. 
the inscription on this plaque for Steve. <laughs> you get it back. <laughs> In honor of his selfless gift of time, talent, and teamwork, this plaque of appreciation is presented to Steve Beal on April 24th, 2014. My heartfelt thanks, Robert A. Downey, President and CEO. And inscribed below is uh, one of those quotes from Sir Winston Churchill that means a lot to me. We make a life by what we gain, or we make a living by what we gain, but we make a life by what we give. And that's Steve Beal, and I think you've all known that for a long, long period of time. But he's a great guy. That was so fun. And I told Bob, I said, well, and I will spend the 100 bucks. And he said, it's sold out. You're already lost. So <laughs> that's what I get for not calling him back sooner. Um, at this point in our, our uh, set of awards, we're going to talk about our food sanitation awards. Food safety is important to each of us. To expect that our food is, we expect that our food is safe. We expect that it has been prepared under sanitary conditions by people who practice good hygiene and safe food handling. Despite these expectations, one in six of us becomes ill from food each year. Our food safety program's goal is to prevent foodborne illnesses by assuring the food you eat is safe, in addition to training food managers and food handlers in enforcing the food code. Today, the Board of Health recognizes two food establishments for their Food Sanitation Excellence Award. Nawa Rinchin, who's the owner of the oven, would you please join me on stage? I'll get it right, Mr. Rinchin, I promise. The Oven Downtown and the Oven East are two favorite places to eat for many Lincoln residents and visitors to our city. The Oven's combination of fine Indian cuisine and excellent service have made this a successful restaurant for over 25 years. Come on up. Customers experience great service, savory food, and enjoy the enticing fragrances of curry, saffron, and other spices. However, it is what most customers don't see that led health department inspectors to nominate the oven for one of this year's Food Sanitation Excellence Awards, the focus on food safety, sanitation, and cleanliness. Consistently practicing correct cooling and reheating are two of the most difficult food safety steps to accomplish 100% of the time. Shortcuts are always a temptation for busy food establishments, but not at the oven. For the oven, high priority is given to proper cooling and reheating. During an inspection, staff observe large tubs of curries and other sauces cooling. They're surrounded by an ice bath, and an ice wand is deeply submerged in the tub before being placed in the walk-in cooler. Reheating is done quickly. Mr. Rinchin is walking around the kitchen, taking the temperatures of food in all steps of the food, planning, the food preparation process. And his manager, who's also here if you'd like to come up, at the Oven East, Sewan Giltson is equally focused on food safety. These exemplary sanitation practices are known as active managerial controls in the food safety industry. Mr. Rinchin and his staff look for opportunities to improve. During inspection, staff correct any issues on the spot or develop a plan to address them quickly. Several improvements have been made in the facility, ranging from a new wine cellar to additional walk-in cooler storage for special events. Congratulations to Mr. Rinchin, the owner of the oven, and the Oven East for receiving one of this year's Food Sanitation Excellence Awards. Our second recipient of the Food Sanitation Award today is Ming's House, a true gem in Northeast Lincoln. Owner Jin Wong, please, please join me up here at the podium. <laughs> Opened in 2008 in the Bethany area, Ming's House quickly became a favorite of those that live close by. However, word soon spread and now people from all over Lincoln make Ming's House one of their top choices for Chinese food. When customers walk up to the counter to order, they receive a friendly greeting and quickly see that Ming's house has nothing to hide. 
The facility is designed with the kitchen in full view of the customers so that they see the cook and how their food is being prepared. Ming's House has an excellent record for both kitchen sanitation and food handler permit compliance. During inspections, Mr. Wang and his staff make any needed corrections quickly or figure out how to further assist with the inspection. Recently, the owner decided to close from, for some interior remodeling. Not only did they update their dining area, but also completely replaced kitchen ceiling tiles, thus giving them an even new and brighter look. This is just one example of Mr. Wang's focus on keeping Ming's house clean and sanitary. Congratulations to Mr. Wang and the Ming's house staff for receiving the 2014 Board of Health Food Sanitation Excellence Award. The recipient of our Public Health Leadership Award has worn many hats in public health. The hat she wears today is that of President and CEO of the Community Health Endowment of Lincoln. Lori Seibel, please join me at the podium. <laughs> public health has been Lori's passion as well as her career choice since her first day of professional employment, and that was at the Health Department. The department's long-term employees remember Lori as a new, colleague of a new college graduate excited about her new job as project coordinator for Lifetime Health. With time came more responsibilities and eventually Lori became the department's public health epidemiologist. After 11 years, Lori moved from the health department to the mayor's office to serve as an assistant to mayors Mike Johans and Dale Young. In 1999, Lori became the president and CEO of the Community Health Endowment of Lincoln. And for the past 15 years, she's used her knowledge of public health, her advocacy skills, her leadership ability, and most importantly, her dedication to making Lincoln the healthiest community in the nation. She helps guide projects that would have the most impact on health of our citizens. Over the years, the Board of the Community Health Endowment has had the opportunity to review hundreds of worthy applications and make the difficult decisions of which to fund. Lori's there to assist with every application, providing objective information about the project, informing of potential partnerships, and always asking the question, how will Lincoln be healthier if this project is funded? Many of us in this room have been part of the millions of dollars in projects that have been funded by the Community Health Endowment and have answered Lori's, now the staff said many questions, <laughs> about progress, outcomes, and sustainability. She holds us accountable to our promise to improve the public's health. Lori's dedication to public health extends well beyond her work day. Included in her lengthy list of her past and current volunteer activities, most of which have public health connection, are the Women's Health Council, Nebraska Public Health Association, the Health Partners Initiative Leadership Team, and an industry leader with the Heart Association Health Walk. In addition to almost all of the Community Health Endowment Board of Trustees here today, with Lori or her husband Brian and her daughter Thea, Unfortunately, their son Trey isn't with us because he has some school track obligations. I'll bet he, bet he has to be there to run. Um, Lori, please know that we're very honored in having you be our Public Health Leadership Award winner this year. Thank you, Judy, and thank you to so many of you that I know in the room. Um, it's as I'm sitting there and I'm thinking and I'm listening to all this, which most of it I don't know where you got, so I, I don't know who your mole was, but um, I'm thinking about all the people and places um, that have been put in my way um, during my career, and certainly a career that started at the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department. But if I go back a little ways, just a little bit, to the time, um, I grew up in a little town. I was a farm girl. I grew up in uh, southeastern Nebraska in a little town of 400 people. And I probably didn't recognize it at the time, but um, it kind of was in my DNA, kind of the idea of public service and giving back to my community. Because I sat down not too long ago and I thought about my parents, my mom and my dad, who um, both had just this very clear, um, vision of giving back to community and being responsible to the community you live in. And I counted up the number of years they served in elected office, either as school board member or a town board member or a county board member or as a member of the Nebraska legislature. And together they served in elected office 72 years. Wow. And um, I just took that for granted. I thought, that's just what people do. And then um, I left graduate school armed with a degree and pr 
probably thinking I knew everything I needed to know about public health, and I began looking for a job in community health. And I had the great fortune of ending up at the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department, which, I mean, it's really the best health department in the country. How fortunate is a new kiddo on the block able to do that? And so I sat around the table every day with people like Judy and you know Scott Holmes and Steve Beal and Kathy Cook and Gwendy McGinnis and um, Elaine Severe and Carol, du Carol Douglas, who we'll um, honor here shortly. And I learned something from them every day. But I also saw their passion and their commitment every day to give back to protect this community and improve public health. And um, then I have the great privilege of working for the Community Health Endowment and helping create and develop its vision for the community. And as someone said earlier, I think the mayor said, you know, our vision out of the block was to make Lincoln the healthiest community in the nation. And at first it seemed so ambitious, but I think you have to convince me on most days that um, we're not. Because I think I look at the programs and the people and the passion that at work in this community and I see the people that are doing that work and I believe that if we're not, we should be the healthiest community in the nation. And so I get to surround myself again with trustees and staff. Jody Los, Jody and I have worked together for 25 years. There should be an award for that. Working <laughs> 25 years with me um, deserves something more than lunch, Jody. Um, but uh, um, working with people like that on the board and the nonprofits, my job is to listen to people's ideas and dreams every day. How cool is that? You know, I get to listen to their ideas and their dreams and their visions for creating a better place to live. So it's a great job, it's a great gig, and I'm, and I'm fortunate to have it. Um, and the last thing I would say is then I get to end my day and I go home to three people who I adore, and um, my husband who's as steadfast as they come, and my daughter Thea who makes me laugh every day, and my son Trey whose heart is as big as this room. And so um, I'm blessed and I'm grateful, and I'm especially today just excited about being able to stand here and thank all of you. So thank you. Our final award is our Carol Douglas Public Health Achievement Award. This award is presented in memory of Carol Douglas, who is a former health department leader, to a health department employee that has greatly exceeded expectations in their job as a public health steward and employee. This is an employee who goes above and beyond to assure the health of our community and as a colleague and a coworker. Health department staff submit nominations for this award. And this year, Brenda Christie is our award winner. Brenda, please come up and be recognized. Brenda quietly goes about doing her outstanding work. She's one of those gems who ex whose experience and knowledge are valued by all who have the opportunity to work with her. In her 40 years with the health department, Brenda has seen and done a lot. She actually gets an award at All Staff tomorrow too for her 40 years. It's her week. Beginning in 1974, Brenda brought her public health nurse skills to the homes of the elderly, new moms, and families with children who were struggling with poverty and illness. She operated neighborhood community health stations. She provided nursing services to local parochial and rural public schools and staffed well-child clinics for low-income families. Today, Brenda is an experienced communicable disease nurse who brings to that role her leadership and caring as well as determination and persistence. Just ask some of her TB patients. Patients with active TB require extensive long-term treatment with multiple medications for six to nine months, and it's imperative that these patients complete the treatment. It's not surprising that patient compliance can be a real challenge, but Brenda never gives up. Patients soon recognize that no matter what they do to avoid her visits, to watch them take their medication, she will be there, mostly because Brenda cares. Another impact, or another aspect of treating persons with active TB is to work closely with the family members, coworkers, and in their employers to educate them about the disease. It's important to ease their fears and to make sure treatment is given where needed. Brenda does a great job of working with the client, family members, and other health professionals. It takes patience and persistence and understanding to make it all work, and Brenda has a proven track record of doing just that. Her knowledge of communicable disease and how to control the spread of disease is a tremendous health asset to the community. Her work, though, brings with it variety. In 2002, she worked with our Environmental Public Health Division to craft an ordinance on tattoo and body piercing. 
She then participated in the development and implementation of a training program for these local artists. In 2006, she accepted a position on the Heartland National TB Center Advisory Committee. This TB Center is one of five regional training and medical consultation centers in the United States funded by the CDC. Brenda also contributes to the community and has served on Lancaster Manor Advisory Board, the YWCA Board, Lincoln Public Schools Headlights Policy Review Committee, and Brenda is a graduate of Leadership Lincoln Project All. Brenda's dedication, her caring, her quiet leadership, her knowledge and skills, and her long-term commitment to public health are what make Brenda Christie so special. She is, she is such a great role model to us all, and she's a valuable member of our department. She's a very deserving recipient of the Carol Doug Douglas Public Health Award. And with Brenda today are her husband, Thomas, and her son, Johans. Congratulations, Brenda, and thank you for your outstanding service. Thank you. I am just really honored to be the recipient of this award. I uh, am fortunate to have known, to have, have had the opportunity to have known Carol Douglas. And what I remember about her was her, um, her passion for public health. And uh, I, I really enjoyed the stories and the experiences she shared with us about her public health experience. And um, what I uh, always try to do when I am working with families, I felt really inspired and motivated by many of the things that she shared with us. Uh, I like to just, at all times, try to make a positive uh, difference in their lives when I'm working to try to help them to improve their health and well-being. Uh, it's so important to uh, work with these individuals and help them to help our community and to improve in their health and well-being improves our health outcomes in the community and that makes our community a, a better and a healthier place for us to live, work, and play. <laughs> so thank you so much. And with that, that ends our celebration today. I want to thank all of the staff who made it possible. Um, we had some great leaders who were helping us out today. Um, and I really appreciate everybody being here. I guess the one thing I just hope that you'll take away is that you are our partners and you are our lifelines. And without you, we couldn't do the work that we do. Um, I hope you will hang in there on the tough days. And I hope you'll celebrate with us on the good days. And I hope you'll continue your commitment to making this the healthiest community. Thank you very much.